This is section 5.1 and we're going to be introduced to the definite integral and the actual title of the section is area and estimating with finite sums. So we're just kind of getting a background. So the definite integral is the key tool in calculus for defining and calculating quantities important in math and science. Um, the idea behind it is that we can compute those quantities by breaking them into small pieces and then summing up the contributions from each pace, piece. We then consider what happens when more and more smaller and smaller pieces are taken. Finally, if the number of terms contributing to the sum approaches infinity and we take the limit of these sums, the result is a definite integral. And we'll be doing more with that as we go along. But right now, we're going to just get into the basics. So, in this picture, the area of this region, so the blue, we don't have a simple formula for that, for area of that region. But we can get an estimate if we use two rectangles. If we draw two rectangles here, um, and that's an upper estimate, and four rectangles give a better estimate because here we have this much red that's left over that's not actually in it. It gets less. And then if we did a lower sum approximation, this is still upper, but you're getting, you're getting the more rectangles that you put, the closer you get to the actual area. The lower sum the rectangles go and, and the endpoints click under the blue region. So here's lower, here's upper. So the upper goes above it, lower goes below it. And if we look at this chart, the number of sub intervals, and it's got the lower sum, the upper sum, and the midpoint rule, which we will also look at. So when you had two intervals, you had a lower sum of 0.375, an upper sum 0.875. We start adding more and breaking it into more subintervals. When we get to 1,000, the lower sum, and you see this decimal number, the upper sum, very close to the same, and the midpoint rule, we're all approaching this. Very different with just two but the more pieces you get that you can break it apart into. So you can see that then if you take the limit as that, as the pieces approach infinity, you get closer and closer to an, a, a really good approximation of the area. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Let's go look at our problems. All right, there are only four questions in this assignment, but to each question, the first two questions have four parts. We may not do all of the parts here on the video, but you will do four parts in each one. So that's eight items to do and then there's two more questions. So it says use finite approximation to estimate the area under the graph and so here's our function 6x squared and above the graph uh, we're going to do it under and above meaning we'll do the upper sum and the lower sum with two rectangles and with four. We'll do that on both of them. And we're doing it from x sub zero equals zero to x sub n equals eight. So our interval is zero to eight. So I've written this down here. Let's do a part. All right, so I've written that down here again. f of x is six x squared, interval from z to eight, zero to eight. So we wanna find delta x. What's the change? So that's eight minus zero, and we have two rectangles. So that equals four. That is the length of each interval. It's also the width of the rectangle. If you're going from zero to eight, and you have two rectangles, each rectangle will have a width of four. So when you look at it for the lower sum, that means you're gonna choose the minimum two rectangles, here's my intervals, zero to four and four to eight. Then you do F of each piece of the interval. So F of zero, F of four. And then for this one, you do F of four 
an f of 8. That's just either throwing it in the calculator or if it's something easy and you can do by hand. Then in each interval, we are picking the minimum, okay? And so it's 0 and 96. So every time you're going to take the numbers you get here and multiply them by the width of the rectangle. It's like you're doing the area of the rectangle. These are the heights. 4 is the width. So the area is 0 times 4 plus 96 times 4. So our answer for the A part is 384. If we change and do the lower sum with four rectangles, the difference is in our intervals. So delta x is now 8 minus 0, but dividing by four rectangles. So the width of each rectangle is 2. The intervals then become 0 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 8. You do the same thing. You do f of 0, f of 2, f of 2, f of 4, 4, 6, 6, 8. And you are still looking for the minimums. So these are the lower numbers. And remember, our width is 2. So for the area, we have 0 times 2, 24 times 2, 96 times 2, 216 times 2. Add up all of those and you get an area of 672. Now C part says now you're going to do two rectangles but you're looking at the upper sum. This didn't change from part A. Same idea and you do your same intervals but instead of choosing minimum you are choosing the max. So now you have 96 times 4 and 384 times 4 and you get this for your upper area. Same idea for the uh, using four rectangles. Your width is two, your intervals are two. You do the same numbers, but you are choosing the larger ones. So here's your area. You do that multiplication and you have a total area of 1440, okay? Now, let's look at number two. Number two, we have eight minus x squared minus 2x. Between x is negative 4 and x is 2. So delta x, you start on the right and subtract this way, is 2 minus a negative 4 over 2. So that's 6 over 2, that's 3. And we have x sub 0 equals negative 4. Then if we, and I don't think you have to do it here. Let's look down here. We had um, two rectangles and our width is 3. So negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. So here's our intervals and we'll do f of negative 4, f of negative 1. Second interval is f of negative 1 and then f of 2. And we are choosing the minimum because we're doing the lower sum. So we have 0 and 0. And we get an area of 0 at negative 4 uh, at the first interval. All right. B part, we now have four rectangles. And we get some fractions. So this is worth looking at. So we have 2 minus a negative 4 over 4. That gives us three halves, and it was just easier for me to do as decimals. So I did negative 4 plus 1.5, and you get negative 2.5. Negative 2.5 plus 1.5 gives you negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1.5 gives us 0.5, and 0.5 and 1.5 gives us 2. So here are our intervals. And we still do the same way, f of negative 4, f of negative 2.5. And you do that all the way down, and you're choosing your minimums. We still have a couple that have 0 in there. We're multiplying by 3 halves each time. That's the width of our rectangle. But we do end up with 20.250. Then you would do the upper sum, and you do it the same way. And... You're just following the same process. I don't think we need to go through every one. Um, here's the one upper sum with four rectangles. 
you have the same intervals, you do the same thing, you're picking the max values and multiplying them by 1.5 and then adding up and getting that. So for those first two questions, each has four parts, but um, once you get the process down, that's not too bad. Let's look at number three. We're only doing it once, but it has a good bit of stuff. So using a finite sum, estimate the average value by particip partitioning into four subintervals and evaluating f. So we've got x to the fourth from two to four. So that's four minus two divided by four rectangles. That's two fourths or one half. And I just again went to decimals. So from two and ending at four, two plus a half, two and a half plus uh, gives you two and a half, and then two and a half plus a half gives you three, three uh, plus a half gives you 3.5, etc. But then this says we're doing it by midpoints, not lower sum, not upper sum. So in each of these intervals, I found the midpoint between two and 2.5 uh, is 2.25, between 2.5 and three is 2.75, etc. You found the middle between these two numbers. Now the heights of the rectangles, you're taking the midpoint and plugging it in for f of x. So 2.25 to the fourth, etc. through those. That gives us the heights of our rectangles. You are finding the area by taking the height, the length, times the width. Remember the width is this one half. So you have these. So essentially on these, I'm multiplying the bottom by two. Multiply your denominators by two and you get this for your area if you add that up. Now this did ask for the average value. This would give us the complete area. The average value is the width of the interval times the approximate area. So I had, this was my area when I added up all of these. And then if I take half of that, that's multiplying the denominator by two and I get 256 on the bottom. So there is your final answer. So that looks a little bit different. You're using midpoints. All right, let's look at number four. All right. Four subintervals calculating at the midpoints, and our function is 7.5 plus sine squared pi t over the interval 2 to 4. So the width of our interval is 4 minus 2 over 4, which gives us 1 half. We set up our intervals the same way, we get our midpoints the same way. Now the heights, it's easier to do maybe on the calculator. You have, um, if you put this in the calculator and put your midpoint in for this one, and you get eight. And actually it's gonna end up, let's see, let's grab our calculator. So I grabbed the calculator and I put our function 7.5 plus sine and the squared is gonna go at the end. You can't put it right here where it looks like when it's written that way. And inside you've got pi times 2.25. Close that and then close the whole thing and square it and you get eight. And then a quick trip, at this point you can just hit second, enter, and it brings back the previous one, but you can just go in here and what are we changing the third one? 3.25. So I'm going to change there 3.25 and hit enter. We're getting eight for all of them. Let me do a second enter one more time. And our last one was 3.75. So we'll go back here, change that to a seven and enter. So we did those on the calculator, and you see that you get eight for every one of your heights. So let me move that out of the way. And our width was one half, so our area was eight times one half plus eight, etc. We had four of those. 
and that was 16. That's our area, but they wanted average value. That's take one half the width of the rectangle and multiply it by the area that you got here, and so your answer would be 8. So I think this is really just computation once you have the process down, and you should, with following what we've done here on the video, you should be okay to do these. Again, there's four questions, um, but the first two have several parts. I think you'll be fine doing that.